Nathan, Neve, it is so amazing to meet you. I'm so excited to talk about Culprits today. I watched it and obsessed. So, so good. And both of your characters, I find deeply compelling in different ways. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start with you, Nathan. Now, at the core of this, of course, our audience is so excited to see a Black queer love story being centered in what is kind of a traditional crime story. Can you talk a little bit about what it meant to you to get to bring a story like that to screen and how you sort of approached representing a community um, that is underrepresented? Yeah, I think Jay really was very specific in in wanting to do that, I think, in terms of um, uh, two, two Black gay queer characters, but also having a character that wasn't highlighted in the genre of the heist, which would be the muscle, the body going and whatever that would be. Um, and I think it was amazing that he didn't, he made them very, very normal. He gave them very normal middle-class existence, you know, the school run and like, you know, take out and what are you going to eat and opening post. And he really, I just think he really grounded them and then then could run off into something that was high stakes. And that was amazing by by just the sheer fact that they were there um, and as them, I thought it was a really, really wonderful and powerful. I think that's what's so exciting about it is this, it, the subtlety and the it's like quietly revolutionary in its inclusion without it making it like- That's Jay. <laughs> Jay, really <laughs> quietly revolutionary. Um, <laughs> I, I think, I, I feel that. So, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Now, Neve, your character does one of the things that I love most in life um essentially is <laughs> i love seeing women behave badly and she behaves very very badly i'm curious for you what is the experience of getting to play a transgressive character like the specialist and you know like what parts of you do you feel like you bring to that role well as you said it's like everyone it's it's fun to play bad and um, and so yeah it's just i suppose that what, what was interesting about specialists is that she kind of lacks a filter um and so that can kind of come you know i suppose it's like how she's perceived by others and she has this amazing um wake of like the history with you know she's she's yeah she's quite mysterious and um well i think and, and has this kind of legendary tale that follows her around and um, yeah, I, I think there's there's always fun building on that and finding a character's backstory, and um, and then yeah, she kind of gets away. She literally gets away with murder on a, on a daily basis, um, and can unfortunately ju justify it in her head, um, and hasn't really had to think about her actions until she's been forced to. And, and, and this is where we kind of find her in the story, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, and I think that, that and then begins to almost become human and um I suppose that the mystique and, and mystery around her is is kind of brought very much into a, more of a grounding place and yeah I think that was that was, a, that was really interesting to, to play around with yeah I bet I I mean I I think both of these characters are so non-traditional it's really exciting to get to watch sort of their stories play out um in the case of David muscle Joe like it's very interesting to see him in the two time periods because there's a version of him that kind of has nothing to lose and then a version of him that has everything to lose. And, you know, it, it this shows like this, this kind of story asks kind of what you would do to protect what you have. And I'm curious, you know, is that something that you found yourself kind of exploring um, when you were reading the script and making, making the series, Nathan? Yeah, you always ask what you would what would I do or how would I? And then you go around and you see what the character does and you try and see it from their point of view. I don't know, it's, it's interesting because I had drinks with someone who's a, uh, a friend of mine who's a new father recently. Um, and he's really amazing, he's a really amazing person. And I was sat there with him and his daughter and I was like, oh no. I was like, if there were a fire, before you would have helped me, but now you're going to help her. <laughs> I'm really aware that I would be back to death in this fire if, if it had happened. I think that when you have family and stuff, he you're right in terms, and that's a huge thing. It's right that he had nothing to to lose, um, which is why he got into that situation. Because in actuality, he had nothing. He was he was a marked man, and he had to he had to leave. And I've always thought that one of the the saddest things about the the show is that 
he just did something so extreme, which was to take part in this heist to gain a very, very normal life, which means that he never thought that it was available to him before. It was never, he was never accessible to him. And then he suddenly has this life and it's high stakes because he could lose it. It's family, it's something he's built, it's something that he loves. Um, and I, I, I tried to carry that throughout the whole thing. But yeah, it's the, the the kind of two periods of that, one really does influence the other because if he had something to lose before, maybe he wouldn't have been taken part in the heist. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I get, want to say again how much I loved Culprits. I'm so excited for people to see it. I've been recommending it to all of my friends. Um, and I know our, our, our readership is going to go crazy for it. So thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel.